Okay, so I was talking today about the redwood forest. Thank you. And the redwood forest has a lot of animals that live in it. The redwood forest has a lot of vertebrates. And today we're talking about the different vertebrates. So this right here is the coyote. And the coyote, um, Native Americans actually called it little wolf. And it's listed, it's listed um, uh, it's about the size of a medium dog. And the medium dog, the coyote, can sing at night. Sometimes you hear them, oh, 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 oh. and the coyote will hunt in packs both at day and at night. Now, sometimes they live in old badger holes. They don't really like to dig their own holes. And they'll have three to nine pups per year, and they'll eat meat such as fish, fresh or dead fish. They don't have a problem eating dead fish. And they also like fruit and vegetables, and they like melon. If they find your melon patch, they'll definitely help you eat it. They also like deer, rabbits, squirrels, and mice. I'm so glad you guys told me about the volume because I would hate for you to miss this. This is a porcupine. Have you guys ever heard of a porcupine? A lot of people think of them as a walking pincushion. Each one of these things that looks like a hair is as sharp as a needle. Porcupines can live about 10 years and they do weigh up to 15 pounds. They're about the size of a house cat. Now they're a type of rodent. And porcupines, because they're rodents, have to chew constantly. Now, each one of these sharp hairs or quills has a lot of calcium in it. So porcupines have developed a strange habit. They like to chew on bones and antlers. That's what they chew on constantly in order to get enough calcium to grow new antler. Now, the porcupine, they can chew on it because they have very, very sharp rodent teeth and rodents have to wear their teeth down so they don't get sick. And so the teeth don't grow too long and then they can't eat. Now porcupines are vegetarian and so they eat a lot of bark and stuff like that in addition to the antlers and the bones. Now think about it. A baby porcupine is born with its quills already on. That sounds a little bit crazy, huh? The porcupine with its quills already on. Well, when they're first born for that first hour, their quills are more like hair and they're really flexible. But then after that, they harden and they get really strong. And so then the baby will be protected, but it won't hurt the mother while it's being born. Now, a porcupine baby it's called a porcupet, and I think that's pretty cute. Porcupines also um, have no ability to shoot their quills. They can't shoot them out. You have to bite a porcupine if you're a predator in order to get the quills. And the quills are barbed. And for example, if you bite it in with your mouth, it'll work its way up through your nose. Now, the other really thing about porcupines is that they're very good swimmers. You see all these little hollow quills are just like floating. It's just like going to the river in the summer and floating. Now, since you guys couldn't hear before, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the spotted owl again. Would you guys like that? Should I talk about the spotted owl again since you missed it? Yes, thank you, Kalea. So this right here is the northern spotted owl. The northern spotted owl is up to um, 16 inches long, and it can have a 42-inch wingspan. This is a threatened species that lives here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. They live in the old growth redwood forest, and they like it when it's quiet. Now, they eat a lot of things like flying squirrels and voles, and other little animals, wood rats and insects that live up in the redwood forest. And um, they, they can fly really far and very quietly. 
the feathers on an owl help them fly very silently. And then the other animal that I'd already talked about was the California quail. Since it's our state bird, I'm going to go back and talk about it again. The California quail is the official California state bird. And the most distinctive thing about it is this little plume feather right here that's actually made of about four or five feathers. This plume is sometimes used by Native Americans to decorate their baskets. And this quail, tiny little bird about the same size as a robin, lives on the ground like a chicken and will run about. And they lay about 10 to 13 eggs. And when the eggs hatch, there's little fluff balls about this big, tiny little fluff balls running around. They're little chicks. And the mother and the father take care of the chicks and raise them. Now, the little chicks grow up and when they're babies, they eat insects and um, greens and seeds. But then when they're older, they mostly just eat seeds. And you usually find quail nesting under bushes on the ground. They're primarily a ground animal. Now, I was going to talk about the official mascot of the corona outbreak. This right here is a raccoon. And if you rearrange the letters in its name, it actually spells corona. The raccoon is about 10 to 16 pounds. And it does wear a mask, just like we need to do because of COVID. COVID is the disease caused by coronavirus. The raccoons have a striped tail, and you can see their little mask. They also have very long whiskers, like a lot of nocturnal animals. That helps them feel their surroundings. And then they also have a little five-fingered hand, just like us, with an opposable thumb. Their opposable thumb helps them grab things. And raccoons really like to wash their food. They hold it in their hand and they wash it. So you usually find them around creeks and streams. And they love to fish. In fact, they have the most varied diet in the entire forest. They eat just about anything. Raccoons will eat eggs, baby birds, fruits, nuts, melons, seeds, fish, Shellfish, reptiles, insects, small mammals, ducks, domestic livestock, which is a way of saying our animals that we try and raise, produce from our gardens, and even our trash. This is earned them the nickname Trash Panda. Now, another thing about raccoons is they have about two to eight babies per year, and their babies are called kids, and they raise them in trees in a little hole. So that's about raccoons. Are you guys ready to learn about mountain lions? As I work as an interpreter here at Humboldt Rabbit State Park, I most often get asked, are there bears and mountain lions here? And yes, there are both. Now mountain lions like to stay away from humans. They only go around humans when there's a loss of habitat, when there's too many people living in their homes. And so here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, where we have 53,000 acres, we don't usually see the mountain lion. Here is a mountain lion that came down to the river to drink. And this mountain lion, and mountain lions like it, can live up to 10 years in the wild. As you can tell, they camouflage very good in the grass. They're very hard to see. They can have one to three babies, which are cubs, and they raise them for two years. They stay with their mother, who snuggles them and takes care of them, just like you might take care of your baby cat or kitten. They can grow up to eight feet long, though. Mountain lions are very long. Most are more in the six feet length. And when you look, at the mountain lion. It's very long, but half of its body length is actually its tail, and they have very strong hind legs. Mountain lions can run very fast, and they can also jump very far. Mountain lion can jump up to 45 feet if it's running. 
45 feet is longer than a long city bus or school bus. A mountain lion can leap 15 feet straight up a tree. See this tree back here? 15 feet up the tree. That's a long ways for a mountain lion to leap. So if you see a mountain lion, chances aren't very good. But if you ever see a mountain lion, make sure you do not run. You see, one of their favorite food is deer, and the deer always run. But if you see a mountain lion, it's better to stand and talk to it so that it doesn't think that you're prey. You put your hands up in the air, just like with the bear. You put your hands in the air and you say, hello, bear, hello. And then it thinks you're not afraid. It can't hear you heartbeat. And so it'll usually turn and walk away. If you run really fast, though, the mountain's got, the mountain lion's going to chase you because they like to catch their food. Now, this is a cute little animal, just in case the mountain lion was a little bit scary for you. This is called a Douglas squirrel. I really like Douglas squirrels. Douglas squirrels have about three to four babies at a time. And their babies are in their little nest, all helpless in the tree. I really like them. They're very sweet. And they will eat mushrooms and acorns and pine nuts, hazelnuts and grains, sometimes baby birds and little grubs, which are beetle larvae. Now, one of their favorite things is pine cones. And if you look at this picture right here, you can actually see He's holding what's left of a pine cone. The squirrel will grab the pine cone in its little paws. They don't really like acorns as much as they like the fur cone. And they chew it off, chew it off. And inside here are little seeds, little pine nuts. And these are very nutritious. And they eat them just like corn on the cob. And then what's left is just this. It's called little middens. The little middens, M-I-D-D-E-N-S, are left over when the Douglas squirrel eats his pine cones. You're much more likely to see the little middens on the ground than you are to see a Douglas squirrel. Now, what you can sometimes do is you can hear them. They say, chee, chee, chee. You'll hear them up in the trees being very loud. Oh, we forgot to do the mountain lion roar. Would you guys like to do the mountain lion roar? It kind of sounds like, wow, you gotta do it loud. Wow, that's a mountain lion roar, in case you wanted to try that sound. This is a bobcat. That's what made me think of the mountain lion roar. Now, bobcat gets its name from its short little bobbed off tail. So it's got a short little tail. A mountain lion has a long tail. Now, bobcats are camouflaged. They have all these speckles to help them bend in. Bobcats are cute. Yes, Kalea. And bobcats use their spots for camouflage. They can weigh up to 30 pounds. If you have a really, really fat house cat, sometimes the bobcats could be as big as your house cat. And you might think, oh, how cute. I could keep one for a pet. But this is a ferocious wild animal. The bobcats can actually catch and eat deer. And bobcats, they can also eat rabbits and squirrels, mice and gophers, grounders like quail. And they are very helpful for controlling little mice. Bobcats can also jump, but not nearly as far as the mountain lion. Does anybody know what this is? This is the gray fox. And what does a fox say? Yip, 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 up, up. Foxes make a lot of different noises, not just one. And foxes can hunt a day or night. They sleep in rock crevices, and they really like it when they find hollow logs to sleep in. Now, the gray fox can climb trees. It can climb trees as fast as a cat. The only member of the dog species that I know of that can climb trees in the United States. Now, the gray fox is omnivorous. It'll eat insects, rodents, gophers, mice, squirrels, birds, rabbits, berries, and fruit. That's right. 
Almost everybody likes to eat berries. A baby fox is called a kit, and the gray fox will have three to five kits at once and raise them in a den. Are you guys ready for a less common animal that lives here in Humboldt Redwood State Park? This animal was hunted for its fur for a long time, and the population got very low. Oh, Trisha, I can't wait till you can come to Humboldt Redwood State Park. I wish COVID was over also. This right here is the otter, and the otter lives in the river at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Remember how I said that the salmon and the lampreys need the cool pools and the shades of the redwood in order to survive? Well, the otter eats all the fish and the lampreys that live in the water here, and it swims in the water. It is extremely playful. It is an excellent swimmer, and it has webbed toes. That means it's like wearing slippers in the summer, and they have a very dense, warm coat because in the winter time, the river here is very cold. So this warm coat acts like a wetsuit and keeps them warm. Now the river otter can have two to four pups at a time. Pups are what they call their babies. And they're very silly and they run around and play a lot. Now the otter will eat fish, crayfish, insects, birds, bird eggs, frogs, turtles, and of course, the lamprey. Oh, you guys, I know everybody misses going to the state park and I hope as soon as COVID is over that you guys come and join me here and we can do junior rangers in person again. That would be really nice. But until then, I'm so glad you guys are joining me for this. Now, the next animal I want to talk about is a black-tailed mule deer. Black-tailed mule deer are a type of mule deer, of course. And deer have antlers, right? Well, actually, only the male deer or the bucks have antlers, and they shed them. They fall off in the wintertime, and they have them in the spring. And when they first grow out, they're covered in velvet and very soft. And the velvet is actually what has the blood vessels, and it helps them grow. And then when they do shed them, they shed the velvet, and then they just have the antler that's very hard, which is just like the bone. And then, after that, they can use them to fight over the females. Now, this is a male deer or a buck, and this is the female mother deer called a doe with her two babies. If you look, the babies have spots for camouflage to help them hide in the grass in the dappled sunny forest or in the tall grass in the meadows on the edges of the forest. Now, black-tailed deer eat twigs and buds, leaves of trees and shrubs, green grass and leafy plants in the spring. And they also have very large ears. The large ears help them hear. And they have one to two babies per year. Occasionally, they'll have three. And they raise those babies for a year or two. And then those babies go off and and live on their own and they sometimes the females will stay in a pack or a herd of deer you guys ready for another cute animal i really like this one this is the spotted skunk in fact sometimes the spotted skunk has a little heart-shaped spot right here on its forehead sometimes it's just a circle the spotted skunk is called that because it has spots. Now, most of you might be familiar with a normal skunk, but this spotted skunk is about half the size of a normal skunk. So instead of weighing about 15 pounds, they weigh about five to seven. And the spotted skunk eats ground dwelling wasps. If you've ever accidentally stepped into a wasp nest, Oh man, it hurts so bad you can get stung so many times. So this wasp eating skunk is our friend because it loves to dig up the wasp nests and eat them. Now they also eat other small little animals, fruits, and eggs. And what you probably know about them is 
that they spray. And when they spray, it stinks really bad. Now, where do they spray from? They spray from their butt, right out of here, out of a special gland. Now, if you look, this squirrel is at the skunk is actually doing a handstand. That's how skunk spray to warn us they'll stamp their feet and after they stamp their feet they'll do a little handstand can you do a handstand i can't but can you do a handstand it's a good thing you're not a skunk if you're doing a handstand that would be scary to see you doing what this is a ringtail cat ringtail cats also live here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. They kind of look like a raccoon with a stripy tail, but they don't have the black mask across the eyes. Now the ring-tailed cats have three to four babies at a time, and they're very good micers, catching mice. In fact, sometimes they were called the miner's cat because people who went mining for gold would try to encourage them to live in their cabin to catch all the mice. Now, the ring-tailed cat is very, very shy and likes it quiet as well. They eat small rodents, insects, bats, reptiles, fruits, and berries, and they have really, really excellent night vision. And just like the raccoon, they like to wash their food and oftentimes will live near the rivers and creeks. Now, in case you're wondering, we do have normal striped skunks here at Humboldt Island State Park. And the normal striped skunk is about twice as big as the spotted skunk, weighs about 15 pounds. And they also will dig up the nests of wasps in the ground. And they also will eat berries and fruits with small eggs and reptiles, just like the spotted skunk. And you can see there's one stripe on the head, two stripes on the back. How many of you have ever seen a bear? We have bears here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Now what we have is the black bear. The brown bear is also called the grizzly. But here at Humboldt Redwood, we have the black bear. But that doesn't mean all the bears are black. Some of them are cinnamon or brown or even blonde. And they can weigh two to 600 pounds. And they have one to two baby bears. Do you guys know what a baby bear is called? It's called a cub. And the baby bears can move really slow, just like the parents. Now, a bear may walk slow when you see it on the ground, but a bear can run really fast and they can climb even faster. And so the bears will eat lots of different things. They're very good hunters and they're nocturnal. They will eat berries and greens and tree buds, eggs, inner bark, fish, all kinds of things. And they even eat dead things if they find them. So that's the black bear. And of course, they'll hunt for fish as well. They really love salmon. They have very long claws. And so they sometimes leave claw marks on trees so we can see if there's a thin there. And this time of year, the bears, you'll see them sometimes in the apple orchard out at Albee Creek here, or you might see them picking huckleberries or blackberries down by the river. Now, you guys remember I said that there were squirrels flying around here at Humboldt Rabbit State Park? This is what I was talking about. This is a flying squirrel. You guys ever seen a flying squirrel? They're nocturnal. That means they only come out at night and they're the smallest California tree squirrel. They're gray on the back with a cream colored belly and they don't have any wings. So how do they fly? They use the flaps of skin between their hind and back legs. The front legs and the back legs have a flap of skin and they stretch it out. And then they're about six inches from there to there with the tail back behind them. Now, they glide from tree to tree, and they can glide up to 100 feet. If you saw a pink one, wow, 
that's pretty lucky. They do have really huge eyes because they only come out at night and they also have long whiskers to help them heal. And they eat berries, nuts, insects, and fungus. And they'll have two to six babies at once. And if something comes and tries to eat them in their nest, such as an owl, they will actually take one of the babies in their mouth and fly to another tree and quick drop it on a limb and go back and get the other baby. And they can do that. They, they glide to a lower point on the tree, then run up the tree and get the baby. So that's the flying squirrel. Now we also have a couple of very rare animals that live only in the old growth redwood forest and the upper canopy. This animal right here is called a marbled murelet. Marbled murelet is a lot like a penguin, about the size of a robin. Its body is about the same size as a large baked potato, and it is recognized as threatened by the federal government, and it's recognized as endangered by the state government. Now, these birds swim around at the ocean, and fisher people would see them, and they would wonder where they nested because they'd never seen any of their nests. Well, what they could do is they would follow them, but they still wouldn't find them. Well, one day, a state park maintenance person was climbing a tree, and he noticed a bird in a nest with webbed feet. Now, as you can see, they love to swim, and they can fly up to 50 miles an hour. Here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, we're about 25 miles inland from the ocean. That means they can get to the ocean in half an hour. This marble hillet flies really fast, but it doesn't land so good. So you have those big branches on the redwood tree, the marble hillet flies so fast, it's gonna crash into it. So they actually use the huge branches with all the lichen and moss on it as landing pads so that they can land on. And the mother makes a little nest out of some lichen on a large branch and lays just one egg per year. The marble murelet mother will sit on the egg while the father flies out to the ocean and goes swimming and fishing all day. But the next day, guess what happens? Just like in the penguins, the father will sit on the nest and the mother gets to go swimming and fishing. So that's the marble murelet, an endangered species that lives here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Another very rare animal we have in Humboldt Redwood State Park is the wandering salamander. The wandering salamander can live in the upper canopy of the redwood forest. Normally they live on the ground, but here in Humboldt Redwood, they're found up to 130 feet up in the redwood tree in those mats of fungus and stuff that I was talking about earlier, the hummus mat. And they will lay seven to nine eggs and those eggs hatch out. And there isn't any larva like there is with normal salamanders. Instead, they hatch out into little baby miniature salamanders. And the mother actually raises them and takes care of them. And then right as they're born, from then until they're adults, they can eat ants and mites and beetles and snails and springtails and all kinds of other arthropods. And they live right up there in the redwood tree. The most fascinating thing about this salamander is it has no lungs. You know how when we breathe in, the air goes in and out of our lungs? They don't have any lungs. They breathe right through their skin. So their skin has to stay moist at all times. That's the wandering salamander. Now I have one last animal I wanted to introduce you guys to that's exceptionally rare, but lives here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. This is the Humboldt Martin. The Humboldt Martin is an endangered species it is a member of the weasel family. The Humboldt Martin is found only in old growth coastal redwoods 
and less than 300 are known to exist. They're selfie cat sized members, predators of uh, members of the weasel family, and they're actually the apex predator here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Now, they're carnivores, so they eat other mammals such as voles, chipmunks, flying squirrels, birds, dead things such as carrion, eggs, insects, fruit, berries, nuts, fungus, and lichen. Now, what's interesting about them is they like to stay away from other martens. There may only be two or three martens in a thousand acres, so they really need a lot of space. And they primarily hunt up in the redwood trees. Now, their little babies are called kits, and they only have one to two kits per year. And they can't have any kits until they're three years old. And then they raise those kits. As you can see, they have little short ears and a triangular shaped head, and they actually have a long body, like a weasel, and then a long tail that can be up to a third of their body length. They also have five toes on each foot. Now, these are only a few of the species that can live in the rivers here in the And we actually have many other species here at Humboldt River State Park that I'm going to show you guys. We have what's called a diorama. And the diorama has some of the animals that live here. I don't know if you guys can see that mountain lion. And then over here, we have a bear. Let's go up to his head. There's the bear. And all of these animals died naturally and were collected here for educational purposes. Back over there, we have some ringtail cats. There's a deer down in the grass by the skunks and the squirrels. So see over here, we have a couple of hawks and up there. Can you guys see the owl? That's a little bit glary. There's the owl, and then down here is a bobcat. Bobcat's right there. Bobcat walking around, and we also have a heron, a type of bird that lives by the river, and some raccoon babies playing in a little tree trunk, and right down there, an otter right on the edge of the river playing. And we even have a couple of California quail down here with the California state flower, the poppy. Over here, we have the porcupine. And over here, we have the coyote the howling little wolf, and up there we have a very rare spotted owl blending into the tree, hiding right there, a little bit hard to see. So those are just some of the animals that we have here in Humboldt Redwood State Park, and we also have a few bird nests down here I wanted to share with you guys. Now the bird nests that I brought are made high in the redwood tree. And this one, if you can see it, has a lot of bark and lichens and a lot of things from a redwood tree that's used to actually make it. And this one is made out of moss and redwood bark as well. And it provides a home for the birds. And then I also brought a piece of lichen to show you guys. So you guys could see some different kinds of lichen that grow up in the redwood tree. So not only is there the smaller stuff that's on this branch here, but there's some lichens over there. Now, the amazing thing about lichens is lichens are actually um, fungus and algae that live together and work together. And there are so many different kinds of lichens that live up in the redwood tree and they provide a lot of food and habitat for the animals. So what I hope you guys learned today is that there's many different places 
in the redwood tree where animals can live. They can live at the top in the upper canopy, or they can live down in the ground, in the shade, in the ferns and the other plants along the ground where the redwood sorrel grow. That is my lesson about vertebrates. Now, are you guys ready to do your junior ranger pledge? Okay, if you're at home, can you guys all raise your right hand? And then just repeat after me. I, Shanna, I, and say your name, promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect and to be thoughtful about what I do and how it affects others and to learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for today's Junior Ranger program. And remember to sign up and I'll see you guys again next Thursday from um, next Thursday at 1130. And if you get a chance, gather together some pipe cleaners, a clothespin, some coloring pins, and some coffee filters. And we'll make ourselves a pollinator because next week I'll be talking about pollinators. See you guys next week. Bye.